Hello and welcome to the Perry Connection. We have a special guest star of our community at, uh, in our studio today, and uh, Mr. Scribbles, aka Michael Sparling, welcome to the show. Hello, nice to be here. Well, you're you're probably one of the best known members of the the Perry community, you know, throughout the state. I work at a number of venues now and uh, that's the word I hear. Yeah, so in case someone is watching who, who doesn't know who Mr. Scribbles is and what you do, can you explain? Uh, basically, <clears throat> I'm into uh, the whole creative process. I had a friend one time who said, well, you're doing watercolor and oils and you like to invent things, you've got to do one thing. Oh. Just mm -hmm. do the one thing. And I said, I don't think I can do that. And, and uh, why is that as an artist? Why can't you do that? Everything gets my attention. And I'm, I'm quite aware that everything we've got came from chaos. And I'm trying to be in touch all over the board. Um, I'm inspired by drops of rain on the sidewalk. It's, uh, it's never ending. So, okay, have you always been inspired, even as a little child? Do you remember feeling? Yes. Can you talk about what that's like? Uh, it, it, early on, uh, I, I spent uh, more than my share of time in the, in the Louvre. <laughs> and my mother <laughs> peeked in one day and she said, what are you doing in here? And I was just I was sitting there taking care of business. And uh, I said, well, I'm... I'm I see a little dog in the worn linoleum, oh. and uh, there's a little guy over here, and he's he's going to feed him a hot dog. <laughs> and she said, get out. <laughs> Other people need this room. <laughs> and uh, I, I never stopped after that. Uh, so you just see things that other people don't see, constant. and then attempt to show us what you see. Constant. And, and in I, what forms? Uh, mainly in my cartoons with kids. I try to inspire kids to, to see things from nothingness. Um, I, I try to get them to keep an open mind, do something with your hands, create something, build something. And uh, uh, I've been doing it for, so well, since I was probably in third grade, I've been drawing. Okay. So. And um, you, your name, <coughs> Mr. Scribbles, is because you ask those children often to scribble a yep an image or uh, I, I ask them to make some lines with highlighters nicely uh, bright colored highlighters and uh, I try to interpret those lines and find shapes that look like things that I've experienced I've always been watching whether I've been on the street at the zoo at a circus, whatever it is, and I, I made mental notes about how animals look. Uh, I studied all the other cartoons in the world, uh, and I, I, I painted most of the Disney figures in oils on canvas panels when mm. I was about 15 years old. Really? So yeah. You still have them? I sold every one of them to a single teacher in high school. Really? Years later, many years later, after I graduated, I saw her by happenstance at a at Strong Hospital, and she said, "Michael Sparling." And I looked over, and she, the first thing she said was, "I gave all those paintings to my kids, and they gave them to their grandkids." Oh, uh, to, to her grandkids, and uh, she said they're still wrapped in the original plastic. Oh. And I, I looked at her, I said, my mother wrapped those. That's amazing. Oh. And I, I just thought the world of that. So uh, uh, at the time, when I, when I was very young, we had a teacher who came into our room and scribbled on the board with chalk. And she said, what is that? And we all said, that's nothing. She said, take another look. And I was hooked. Yeah, I was, so, that, that changed the course of your whole life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And all my friends told me I couldn't draw. Really? They, they gave me a really hard time. And on a box, on that little cart that the teacher brought in, was a little guy, little stick figure with a top hat, and his name was Mr. Scribbles. 
All really? these years later, I thought I'll never get trademark on that. I mean, I know it's taken. It's been taken for all these years. I looked into it. They dropped it. Two other companies picked it up, dropped it, and I got it. But in between all that, when I was so young, I ran home crying. And I looked in the mirror and I said, why can't I be Mr. Scribbles? <laughs> so I called out to the universe. I just, I just wanted that so bad. And there I was. And so, it came something? to you. It came to me. Okay, so you called out to the universe. Were you doing that a lot then, or was that like the first time uh, that you really had that that yearning, that great desire no, for consciousness? No, I, I, uh, I, I, I painted all the time, and uh, I had aunts and uncles who were, who were very supportive. We didn't have much. One day my aunt and uncle walked in the door with an easel, and they put it down in the kitchen and they picked up my paint by number and set it on the easel. Oh. And I walked over and I looked around the easel at my painting and then I fixed myself in front of the easel and I said, Mom, I'm always going to stand here. <laughs> and she said, well, sit here right now, we're having lunch. <laughs> I remember that clear as day. How old were you? Uh, I was probably fourth grade. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. So you, um, you have, you are just so beloved by children who have scribbles. I still have a napkin that you scribbled for me at Burlingham Books. Yeah. Uh, about two thousand and seven. Yep. With a B. Yep. yep. And um, yep. still very, very, very precious. So, what, um, what have you learned from these children that have? taken a, you, who gave you a scribble or a line and you gave back a product. Oh, I'm sure you have uh, many stories. Many stories, but one that's fixed in my head. Somebody told me outright one day. They just stood in front of me and said, there is no magic. Everything is just what it is. And nothing special is going on in the universe. The very next day, and this is no kidding, I wrote it, I keep a journal since college, I keep a journal. I wrote it down in there. Four kids came up to my table when I was working and each independently said, wow, this is magic. I said, thank you, <laughs> reestablishing my world. <laughs> and I just, I, of course there's magic. Uh, and what's your uh, definition of magic? Oh, boy. Uh, uh, finding the little uh, bit of joy that percolates in a, in a troubled world. I mean, everybody's running in four directions today. And uh, I, I look out at that and uh, I, I try to imagine what stabilizes that, but little things like what I do, uh, interact, a human interaction, mm -hmm. not so much the, the techno Mm -hmm. Gadgets, yeah, uh, no, no, but, sort but, of heart to heart. Yeah, yeah, talking with kids who uh, who are right right here, mm -hmm. and that's important. I, uh, I I appreciate that, and, and some of the kids I meet, they're they're uh, very uh, strong, mm -hmm. and they're they're getting good education at home. A lot of them getting a lot of education at home, mm -hmm. which is important, yeah. and uh, and it reflects. It shows up so fast and pure. Good. That's nice. Yeah. Well, um, we could talk for hours and hours, but let's look at some of your work. Okay. All right. Uh, shall we start with the the yes. Happy Mother's Day card? Sure. I'm uh, trying to put together a uh, card company uh, or, or a, a bunch of cards so that I can have a card company someday. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, I, I said a long time ago I'd like to have 500 cow cards in the little town of Perry <laughs> in, in, a, in a storefront uh, next, right next to Olive's, uh, Olive oh, Inc. Okay. And, and I, I pointed that out oh, to great. my wife years ago. And, and I asked Olive one day, I said, what's going on with this place next door? She said, I rented it. I said, oh, what are you going to do there? She said, I don't know. What do you got? Awesome. So I might. Oh, might that be, I'm, I oh, call out to the universe. Oh, that would be great. And yes. there it is, you know. It's right there. So. 
Yeah, that, that's wonderful. So this is a Happy Mother's Day card. And, um, and so you have this ongoing theme of cows. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Uh, in 19 years of uh, working as Mr. Scribbles, I've had countless people tell me that they love cows, their mother loved cows. <laughs> uh, the kitchen is filled with cows and they collect anything with cows. And I know that the, the people are out there and I, and I just, I'm just joyful about the shapes of some of these oh, animals. Yes. And then I and give the them colors. some of my own and the colors. Are great. Yeah, I tell kids all the time and I'll say, I'm gonna make purple spots and they say, cows don't have purple spots. <laughs> I say, when you're a cartoonist, they can be any color you yeah. want. And uh, they sit back and watch and. And this, uh, I don't know if we can, they can read this um, on the screen. Can you just read what this says? There's no other way to say it. You've got to get a job or you'll have to move. <laughs> <laughs> so there's some calves uh, still living with the, uh, the parent cows? Still living at home. Yep. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So, Good. Uh, so now you do have something other than cows. Yeah. You've got this, these talking heads, literally. My little, my, well, these little, uh, my friend Ken Wallace says that they're, they're mish mish characters. When they move <laughs> across the page, I write mish 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 behind them, and it's the shoe sound that they oh, would uh -huh. make otherwise. But, uh -huh. uh, and what does this say? This one says, uh, hey Walt, want to try my goulash? I just made it today. And he said, no, nah, I don't eat nothing that starts with goo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, how does this come to you? I don't know. Mm. I'm up nights. <laughs> you, you just listen. Is your I, is your mind always going? Yes, and I, I I tell kids all the time, and this is how it works. I've kept a journal all these years. I started college back in the '70s. I've kept a journal ever since. I go back and I learn new things from the old notes that I made and they turn mm. into something else totally. Yeah. And uh, uh, going, going back to the, uh, the, the word chaos, uh, I tell kids that everything we have, buttons on our shirt, pencils, ceiling tiles, carpeting, whatever you can name, there was none of it. And we were in caves without mm. clothes. And all that came from the chaos on the planet Earth. And I said, most people think that the world's in chaos and we're in trouble. I say that because of chaos, think of how much more we're going to have. Oh. Just, well, we'll take it, we'll shape it, and, and we'll have bring no order to it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. It's yeah. our consciousness that will provide. And uh, everybody considers, I mean, I, I consider the raindrops on the sidewalk. Other people might consider what to do with a, a piece of wood. Uh, at some point, somebody's going to say what to do with that island of junk out in the South Pacific, mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll figure it out. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. Speaking of that, uh, not that this is junk, but yeah. I, I think this is really, this is another wonderful aspect of your creativity. Mm -hmm. uh, you're an inventor. Yep. And can you talk about this invention? May I take it apart while we're... Sure. Just pop that. There you go. Uh, okay. That is a six-pack uh, that was designed back in the 80s. Uh, I designed that. And it's uh, tongue and groove. And I got the patent on it by reversing the technology. You can slide those together uh, from top to bottom. Yep. Okay. One this top. way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And... Uh, uh, it's got a flare at the top so that when you get six of them together, you do have that pickup point. Mm -hmm. And uh, I tried to design a six-pack with no wrappers to eliminate that one piece. Yeah. Save, save the ducks. <laughs> yeah, all right. Because, uh, you know, I was in uh, Vietnam uh, mm -hmm. years ago. Mm. We were on the ocean, and stuff would come in and just yep. Yep. like like the bottles and yep. and this is a type of plastic this is high density polyethylene mm -hmm. uh, they're making two by fours out of it for benches and things like that so it is recyclable okay and um, uh, a different type of plastic would be needed to house soda pop for the carbonation but six packs of chocolate milk could be sitting there right now right in your uh, in your store on Main Street in Perry there you go. <laughs> you, seriously yep. chocolate milk Yep. Or, you know, 
yeah. something that they could have. I, and I, I, I told my brother-in-law when I was working on this, you can also see birds. <laughs> <fly>. <laughs> you know, I have to stop. Uh, I, I'm admiring your hat. Yeah. Can is there a story about that hat you have? Oh, this one. Uh, oh, and I see, yeah, Mr. Scribbles. Uh, oh, I put a, I put a little bit of flash on there to advertise. Uh, is Perry last night on there? Yes, somewhere? Perry last yep. night. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the band on there was made uh, by a friend of mine. She made this shirt to match, and uh, uh, she's made many shirts for me. Uh, um, uh, what else have I got up there? I can't think. You've got a, a like a copper button. Oh, I right found that at the Avon flea market, and I thought, how unusual, <laughs> yeah. how unique. Yeah. And uh, and then I put in a, a three foot feather in my hat so that people look around and and say, I'm trying to buy a hot dog. Get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> now, is this what you wear when you go out and you do yes. your, your? You call it cartooning. Or scribbling? Yes. Uh, I call it cartooning. Okay. Uh, kids call me all kinds of things. They call me Mr. Scribble Scrabble. Uh -huh. uh, oh my gosh, I must have 25 different names that sound the same. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, that's fun, really fun. Hmm. Do you go to schools a lot? Uh, yes, I go to schools. I go to Letchworth School every year to see Billy Bean over there. He has an after school program that is very successful. Uh, they found a way to work with their budget to uh, provide a whole bunch of entertainment for the kids rather than go out on one jaunt mm -hmm. and back again. And uh, I think that that is a marvelous event. Great. It's very nice. Great. And I see that uh, there's going to be a cartoon exhibit at the Arts Council for Wyoming County. Yes. Can you yep. tell me a little, little bit about that? And is it for, for a student cartoonist as yep. well? Uh, Jackie Hoyt. Uh, got this together and she's invited me in and uh, uh, local kids, kids anywhere, she said any kids, if they draw a cartoon on a card and put their information on the back, uh, send it in, it'll be hung on the same walls as famous cartoonists who have been invited to send some things and we're hoping that uh, we, we get a nice little stack of things from cartoonists who publish all over the United States. Great. Uh, the word went out to them uh, a while ago, and I don't know where that stands, but uh, we're And, and when, when is this up. exhibit going to be? Uh, the opening is uh, October 2nd. Oh. It's coming Oh, up. soon. Yep. Going to okay. have to work fast. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, we're going to have to get this, this show on the air, too. Oh, boy. Not good. only for yeah. October 2nd, but also mm -hmm. for, speaking of the Arts Council, the Letchworth Crafts. Fair is that the exact title? Yes. Kind of? Yes. Okay. Uh, the Letchworth Craft Show is going to be October tenth, eleventh, and twelfth. That's the uh, Columbus Day weekend. Right at Letchworth Park. Yeah. And this year I'm going to have my first annual Mr. Scribbles poster, and uh, I've decided to uh, use cows as uh, my motif. Uh, yearly I, is year, that? Yearly, yes. Mm -hmm. I'd like to do a okay. cow poster every year, yeah. and. Uh, can we get a shot of this very colorful poster? And what does uh, what does this sell for? Uh, Ten dollars. Ten dollars. Yep. Okay. So you can see all those magnificent cows coming down to earth to the farm. Yep. And at the bottom, what does it say? It says every morning, just before the sun comes up, all the cows come back to earth, and everything is moo. <laughs> and I thought it was it was just the strangest thing that came to my head. So I wrote it down, and I said, "Yep, that's it." Yeah. So I've Every, got a, and what do you mean by "moo"? That's a good thing, but everybody can make up their their own mind. What, Isn't that what nice? does that mean? It's like you know? fill in the blank. Sure. Let 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 somebody else create a word for that. You know, and everything is fine, or everything is yeah, groovy, or groovy. There's yeah. a, there's one. Well, and speaking of which. Um, you're, you're really all over. This is why you're so well known. This is a, um, a cup from Burlingham Books, and, and uh, the owner of that store, Ann Burlingham, was on our show recently and actually brought one of these. And uh, I thought, oh, we need to have this when Mr. Scribbles is here because this is a cow that you were asked to draw. Is that right? right for right. Burlingham Books? Yep. yep. And you say, holy cow. 
a bookstore. Yeah, <laughs> and it's six feet tall on the side window. It's, it's really nice. Yeah, yeah it's wonderful. <laughs> so you, you, sort of your signature, um, and here's the B. You always put a B. Don't uh, you put B? No, for, for or, Burlingham. Oh, that's, that's for B Burlingham. for Burlingham. Okay. Yep. yep. Okay, but your your two sort of signature uh, icons or whatever are cows and uh, serpents. Sea, uh, sea serpents? Not so much sea serpents. No. Okay. Uh, I, I haven't done. That. I've been asked not to do that. Oh, really? <laughs> by a few people. Oh, okay. But but uh, <laughs> I should practice my sea serpents. Why not? Well, that's okay. You don't have yeah. to for my sake. But yeah. um, I just thought that that's sort of the a local. Uh, it, it, that's the local lore, yeah. and uh, uh, yeah, I, I just focused on cows. I thought maybe somebody else was doing the sea serpents. So okay, I just, I all right, gotcha. Myself. All right, well, um, we could talk all day about your um, cartooning, but but there's another side to you. So let's talk about the fine art mm. of Michael Sparling. Mm -hmm. Yep. And you go by Michael Sparling? Yes, I do. Okay, all right. Um, it's such a lovely name. It is. And, Michael, yeah. And the thing of it is, I, when I was a very small boy, I'd come to school and the teacher would say, we have a new dictionary. Every year there'd be a new dictionary. And when I wasn't in that room anymore, I went back and there was a podium and I'd go to the dictionary. And all my friends said, what are you looking for? And they'd laugh because they'd say, I'm looking for my name. Uh -huh. and they said, it's your name. It's not going to be in the dictionary. Lo and behold, it's in the dictionary. And sparling means a spiral, which is a scribble. Oh. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that interesting? And you just I, had that, that intuition? I was just, I'm, I was looking for something I had to find, and so it was there. <laughs> well, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I love dictionaries and words, and... Mm -hmm. The uh, I guess it's probably the Hebrew word a, a root of the word Michael is who is like unto God. Yes, I've read that also. Uh, I try not to ring my own bell. He might get mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't have to. You uh, already got it. You're uh, Michael. Well, I, and and my name also means aspire uh, and uh, a spike. It also means a blade of grass. And one time, one of my friends misspoke, and everyone would call me Mike Sparlin. They would drop oh. the G. And one day, I showed up at a party, and my friend blurted out, here comes Spike Marlin. And he said, <laughs> wow. So that stuck. But then I find out that my name means a spike. So isn't that interesting? Lots of coincidences here. Yep. All right, so this is in your fine art mm -hmm. collection. And as I'm looking at it, it's interesting because normally you look for the sign, the author, the author's or the um, artist's signature, but in this case you have it four sides, four edges. <laughs> four sides. People can hang them any way they want. This is all chaos. Uh, and what is sort of is this anything? I mean, I don't know. I can't okay. tell you what you see. <laughs> okay. So it, it, I, I did not start out to paint anything. But well, let's see what I see. I've had tremendous uh, responses to this. I was at the YMCA in Warsaw uh, hanging paintings one time, and a woman came up to uh, Rachel Richter, and she said, who did these paintings? And I thought, oh, no. Now I have to explain them. <laughs> and the woman was 80. Her mother was with her. And they're walking around the track, and she grabbed my arm, and she put her head on my shoulder, and she said, let me show you what I see. Oh. Talk about magic. Yeah. Just the look in her eye. And I told my professor from RIT that story, and he said, how do you do that? I've been trying to do that for 45 years. Oh. So I don't know. I just love what I do. Yeah. Well, so. I, that's it, Michael. You love. That's You're, it. You love. That's it. Can you show us some of your portraiture? I uh, got... Uh, a little woodcut I did a while back, and uh, it's the... Is this uh, one of your heroes? Oh, it is, the Dalai Lama. Sweet man. Yes. Yep, yep. And, Talk about uh, joy. Oh, pure joy. There it is. Uh, when I was in college, a, a teacher came up onto the stage, and he yelled at the audience. We were in a big room, and he said, where is the joy in art? 
and that became my search. Oh. And uh, sure, surely, this man exudes joy. And I found a photograph. I broke it down to uh, positive, negative, and I cut the wood and and made the print. And I'm okay. Not a lot of them, just uh, <clears throat> a handful of them. And so uh, this yeah. um, brings up a point. If someone wanted to purchase some of your art, we know that these wonderful posters, mm -hmm. which I have already purchased mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, for my Michael Sparling, Mr. Scribble's collection, yep. um, they can be purchased at the Letchworth Arts and Craft Fair. Yep. But do you have a studio? I do have a studio on Lake Street in Perry, uh, okay. number one lake. And, and is it uh, in the phone book or the, the, uh, or I'm the, in the Google? I'm in the phone book. And, and, if, and uh, if you Google Mr. Scribbles, there's a uh, phone, uh, okay. phone number there. And so someone, if they want to commission a work, um, are you doing much of that? Not doing much commission. Uh, okay. I've got one portrait I'm working on right now, but my, my vision is going a little bit and uh, it's becoming more difficult. But I want to do more of my, my fine art and okay. uh, <clears throat> some of the... <clears throat> black and white pieces, um, uh, pieces behind you on, okay, the, on the easel over there. Uh, can we get this? There are two pieces there, and uh, those are acrylic on canvas uh, or, or oil. I'm not sure. I've done quite a few. Might be oil. And uh, again, that's, uh, I, I call that image casting. I never know. Is what. that your own term? Yes. Okay. Yep. Uh, I, I never know what's going to come off the bottom of a uh, palette knife. I just scop the surface uh, with it and um, create these images, and they become. And I never go back to an area. I, once the ink oh, hits the canvas, that's it. I leave it alone okay. because it has its purpose. Right. And I've had a great deal of luck with that. They bring me joy. If I never sell a one, I'll be happy that I have them all. <laughs> but on the other hand, <laughs> uh, I, I would like to get those out there and uh, teach people a little bit about uh, uh, about the importance of um, of uh, the um, uh, well, not planning, not so much planning, just paint a canvas. Don't worry about spontaneity. whether spontaneity uh, and uh, going going back to the uh, what's the word I was using earlier uh, uh, the uh, can't think of the term <laughs> but uh, uh, the joy the the, the joy the um, the odyssey <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, just just closing your eyes and and feeling. Yeah, the magic. Maybe. The approach, you know, just just putting the ink on the canvas. Look at it later. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about what it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And I had never bought into the idea of that until about five or six years ago. And uh, and I thought, no, no, if you're going to draw something, be the draftsman. Do it right. Do it the way it looks. But that's not always the way. Um, uh, chaos is, is, that's the word I was looking for, chaos is, is important because we're, we need new ideas and they're going to come from things like that. That's uh -huh. that, in my brochure, mm -hmm. I talk about my jumping off point. Uh -huh. yeah. That's it. That, I see something like that and then I immediately start trying to interpret it. Mm -hmm. And may I just read this? It says, Sure. Let me take you to where I am on the ride of seeing the jumping off, the jumping on point in the artist's mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The ride of seeing. Yep. Yeah, so it's yep. about seeing. And I can't, people will ask me what, what these things are, and I tell them, uh, I, I couldn't ever tell you what you see. Mm. So you tell me what you see. Yeah. And it's, it, it, it's okay. Some people don't trust that. They can't trust that. And they'll they'll just walk away, but it's not for yeah. everybody. Not everybody is creative. Can you? I know you have one more uh, portrait over here. Oh, I do. Yeah. Yep. Can we yep. just yep. see that? We're going to have to, if if you can believe it, wrap it up. But this is uh, a gentleman known in Perry uh, as Ali, mm -hmm. 
and uh, how, can you talk about this, uh, how, how you did this? Uh, I, I saw Ali one day, he, he had just gotten a haircut, and he, he, uh, he said, I don't like it. I said, are you kidding? It's, <laughs> it's great. And uh, I said, let me take your picture. He says, okay. So he stood from it. I took two or three pictures, and then he was off. And uh, I just thought it'd be fun to turn that into uh, high contrast. Yeah, it's piece. great. And uh, and the green. Um, yep. Really. Yeah, I got it. Got a little yeah. bit of architectural shapes in the background, but but not right up front. Uh, uh -huh. And he's an architect. He is an architect. Yeah. Yep. yep. Good. And. Uh, I just pretty much I did that for myself and, and tucked it away and uh, yeah, so good. Yep. Well, thanks for sharing. Sure. And um, sure. as we wrap up, we've got one more poster back here. Yep. This is what you'll see at Letchworth. Look for if these. If you come out from to see Mr. Scribbles. Yep. Get your first annual collectible Mr. Scribbles poster. Yeah, and it says in section D1. <laughs> I always knew I was D1. 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 Well, there you go. We've had D1 on yeah. the show, and now I can wrap it up. There we go. We've, there we go. We've reached a proper conclusion. Yep. Well, Mike Sparling, a.k.a. Mr. Scribbles, yep. I'm so grateful you live here. I'm so grateful I know you. Thank and we've you. just really touched the surface. We, we haven't even mentioned that you... Um, have illustrated books for folks? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Over the years, I've illustrated several books, uh, everything from uh, realistic pen and inks to uh, cartoon work. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got a whole list of my own books that I want to do. And uh, Well, I'm waiting for you to open your store. I think oh, that that would oh, really... I think it'll go. And, and I yeah. do need to switch tracks. Uh, I, I don't want to drive as much anymore. I'm, I'm okay now, but... I know that in mm -hmm. five years, I'm, I'm yeah. going to want to stick come close to, you. to home. Yeah. All, every, all, the, all the kids you you worked with will bring their children and grandchildren yep. to Mr. Scribbles. Yeah, that's for sure. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. I yeah. appreciate we'll, that. We'll have you again. Okay, great. great. And yep. thank you for joining us. Awesome. Mm -hmm.